My name is Helen Birch and I'm a PhD student at Virginia Tech. My co-authors and I have recently published in PeerJ a description of a new genus and species of diapsid reptile, which was recovered from near the Petrified Forest National Park in northeastern Arizona. We have decided to name this new species Microzemiotes sonsoleensis, meaning small punisher from the sonsela member. This new species was discovered at a site called the Green Layer Locality, which is about 215 million years old during the Norian stage of the Late Triassic. During this time, Arizona was not a desert like we know it to be today, but rather was a low latitude, swampy, lacustrian environment with plenty of rep reptile diversity. There were lots of predators, like large predators like croc-like phytosaurs and some of the earliest dinosaurs, but we are also recognizing more and more diversity for small vertebrates in these late Triassic communities. This fossil was discovered by my co-author, Hannah Marie Eddins, in the summer of 2019 by splitting rocks, rock chunks along bedding planes to reveal microfossils within. It's always really exciting in the field when we find complete or partially complete jaws because teeth can tell us so much about the ecology of an animal and its role in an ecosystem. Uh, the fossil that we have described is particularly exciting because we suspect that it was a venom user. But how can we tell that an animal in the past might have used venom? By looking at the teeth. So. Um, Looking at the teeth from afar, we can see that they are tall, conical, sharp at the tips, and lacking any carinae or serrations. Um, this indicates that Microzemiotes was a small carnivore using these teeth to pierce its prey, probably smaller vertebrates and insects or arthropods. Looking closer, we can see deep grooves on the labial and lingual sides of the teeth. Um, we suspect that if these grooves are homologous to those seen in rear fang snakes or beaded lizards, which are used for conducting venom, that this animal too was a venom user. Something really interesting about the teeth of Microzemiotes is that each tooth has two grooves for venom delivery, whereas in living lizards and snakes, we only ever see one groove per tooth. In fact, having labial and lingual grooves for venom delivery is only recognized in one other venomous reptile, and this is of the genus Wichitidon, an archosauromorph or relative of crocs and dinosaurs, um, which also lived in the late Triassic. Because localities for Microzemiotes and Wichitidon are so spatiotemporally close, we can't rule out that these two animals might have been living in the same communities um, and coexisting. However, Microzemiotes was a very, very small animal, probably no longer than a foot in length, similar to a modern day alligator lizard. Um, and the teeth of Microzemiotes are actually about 10 times smaller than those of which it did on. So we are also seeing venom among multiple size classes in the late Triassic. Because Wichitidon is unfortunately only known from isolated teeth, um, we can't do a full comparison to understand the phylogenetic relationship between these two venom users. Um, but it's really interesting that the methods and systems for venom delivery that we are seeing in the late Triassic are so different from those that we see today. Living reptiles that use venom include snakes, helodermatid lizards or beaded lizards, um, varanids, iguanians, and these animals are all grouped together in a clade called Toxicophera. Um, so when we find animals in the fossil record that have evolved venom use independently and are from outside of this clade, it is always really exciting. And we need to recognize that when we look to the past and look for evidence of venom use, what we are going to see won't look exactly like the systems that we recognize today. This is also, in fact, the oldest instance of venom conducting teeth within a jaw for reptiles and is also an outstanding example of the amount of biological and functional diversity that is captured among animals of small body size and the importance of looking at microfossils um, to learn about this diversity. It is no doubt that Microzemiotes was a fierce little predator who could bite back and hold its own in the late Triassic.